Hello everyone and welcome to this video covering structured exception handler buffer overflows. If you haven't seen my first two videos I would strictly recommend you to watch them first as we build up on the basic knowledge provided there. Now to follow this video let's start with some theory. What you can see here in this picture is an example of a structured exception handler chain. The structured exception handler chain can be described as a list of functions trying to solve an exception. The program will try one handler after the other until a handler is able to solve the exception or until there is no handler left and the program will crash. To find the beginning of this chain, the program will have a look in its thread information block or thread environment block. This block is a data structure that contains information regarding the current thread. I would recommend you to have a closer look and a more detailed read on, on the thread environment block, for example here on Wikipedia, so you get a better understanding what kind of information is stored in this data structure. Relevant for our case is this address, so the first position, and here you see it points to the structured exception handling frame, so the beginning of our chain. This time our victim will be the Konica Minolta FTP server. To get a running version of this program, go to the exploit database, look for Konica and click on this icon. Once you have installed the Konica Minolta FTP server, you should see these two icons to start the program. Uh, use FTP Utility to start the FTP server. This server doesn't have a, a graphical user interface, you will just see a small icon here in the taskbar. Let's attach it to our debugger and have a look at the inner workings. Um, the program should show up as KMFTP attached to it. And let's have a look here. Um, we see here the structured exception handler, which will be at this address. So this points to a function that will try to solve an upcoming exception. If this handler is not able to solve the exception, it will jump to this address to see um, if the next structured exception handler is able to solve the issue. What you can see here, if we follow this address, we will end up here and we have a pointer to FF, 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 which is the end of the structured exception handler chain. So this means if the first handler is unable to solve the exception, the program will just crash. Um, let's try to, to crash this program. What we've seen here in the exploit database is that the CWD command is prone to, to the SEH overflow. Uh, vulnerability. So let's try to trigger it. To do so, we will once again use our Python skeleton. We connect to the FTP server on our victim's IP address. We just start by sending 5000 A's. So we will log in as anonymous with a password test1234. We will push the command current working directory plus our garbage and let's see what happens. Okay, command is sent. We already see our ACE here. And as you can read here, access violation when writing to this address, use shift and one of the F keys to pass exception to the program. This is what we wanna do. We want the program to handle this exception. What we can already see here, if, if we scroll down, you see that with our bunch of A's, we already overwrote the first structured exception handler and also we overwrote the pointer to the next structured exception handler. So let's now press Shift F9 to let the program continue its, its flow. And as is expected here, you see EIP is 41, 41, 41, 41, which is our ACE. So we overwrote the structured exception handler and the program does not know what to do because at this address there is no valid function. So let us now use Mona pattern create to figure out the exact number of bytes we need to overwrite to get in control of these two pointers. To do so we use Mona pattern create 5000 
Okay. Adjust our skeleton. Save. Let's restart the program. And send our new program. Let's scroll down. And now we use Mona pattern offset to understand at what location we are here exactly. Mona. We had three six six nine four two three five. So after one thousand thirty seven bytes we overwrite the next SEH. Let's put it in here. So we know the next address, the SEH, will be at 1041. Let's double check. Our garbage will be 1037 A's. The next SEH will be 4 B's. Then we will have 4 C's. And the rest we will fill up with knobs. Let's try again. So once again, we cause an exception, we give the exception to the program, and we are here at 43, 43, 43, 43, which are our C's. We are here. So we overwrote the structured exception handler and a crash occurred. So now that we are able to exactly overwrite the pointers to the next structured exception handler and the first structured exception handler, let's figure out a way how we can exploit it for our use. If you search the internet for buffer, uh, structured exception handler buffer overflows, you will stumble upon a technique which is called pop up red, which means pop the first or the top two values of the stack and return to the next value. To get a better understanding why this technique is useful, let us copy the real structured exception handler and see how the stack looks like. To do so, we started the FTP server again, we attached it to the debugger and we will copy this address. And instead of the C's, we will override it with the exact location and we will set a breakpoint to have a closer look. So we will set the breakpoint here. Shift F2. Okay, let's send the payload. So once again we trigger an access violation, we use Shift F9 to pass it to the program and we add our breakpoint. So if you now look at the stack, uh, what would happen if we would have the pop pop red sequence? We would take away this first value, we would take away the second value and we would return to this value. So let's see what is hidden behind this value. We follow it on the stack and we return here to our next SEH record. So now what you need to understand is if we return to this address um, we will execute whatever stands here. So this is not interpreted as an address 
where we then jump to so it, it's not trying to look at the address 42 42 42 42 but it will interpret this as assembly commands to see what this assembly command would be let's just jump there it's 019 ef 7 go there so here the 42s will be interpreted as increase edx in our case um, it's not useful to have this command here but we will exchange the 42 42s with an with a jump short so once we are here we want to jump into our knobs and then we will replace these knobs with our real shell code Okay, so let's do, let's first find our pop-up red sequence. To do so, we will use Mona again. And the command you need is Mona, S-E-H, minus M, minus O. So we just want to look in the modules that come with the application. And we find a bunch of possible sequences we can use. And also what's good for us, ASLR is false, Rebase is false, Safe SEH is false, and it's not an OS library. So let's just pick this address, copy to clipboard address, and instead of the real handler, we will use, oops, the pop-up red sequence. So we start with 1E, 4O, 2O, 1, 2, we will save. And let's restart. Let's jump to this address and we will set so as you see here, we have a pop-up red. Let's set a breakpoint here, run the application, save, send our payload. We trigger the exception, we pass the exception, and we are now in our pop-up red sequence. So let's see what happens here. I will just use um, F7 to jump one instruction. We pop this value into ECX. We pop this value into ESI and we return to this value. Let's do it. And we are here. Then it should increase EDX, ink EDX, ink EDX, ink EDX. So what we will now do is we want to jump into this um, knob slide. To do so, we will now write some assembly. To jump, we will use the EB and let's say a value of, I don't know, 0A. So we want to jump 10 instructions. We are here and we want to jump 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, somewhere in, into here. So let's overwrite our Bs with, um, let's say, two knobs. A and save. Oops. Let's restart. Attach. We will once again set a breakpoint at our pop up red. Don't forget to run. We cause our exception, we pass the exception, we are at our pop up red. So we go one step pop, pop, red. We are at our knobs, knob, knob. Now we jump short and we are here in our knob slide. Now all you have to do is 
just as we did in the last video, figure out bad characters and create your payload. Now to show you how this would look like in the end, we'll use this is just a shellcode to execute um, the calculator on the system. Here once again we have the garbage, we have the ace, we have our jump short 10. Here we have a pop-up red, we have some more knobs, we have the shellcode and some more fillers. So how would this look like? So closed. Let's copy this pop-up red address. Run. Execute now the finalized script. We cause the exception. We add our pop-up red. Pop-up red. We jump to the shorts. We are in our knob sled. And here we have the shellcode. I will just continue the program flow. And as you see here, the calculator opens. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me feedback, uh, what I could improve. And let's see when I can create the next video. Enjoy.